we have been exploring Thailand, the land of smiles and its numerous places of interest. If you haven't watched those videos yet, I highly recommend you to do so by clicking on the prompt that is flashing on the top hand right corner of your screen. You can also find the link to the entire playlist in my description box below. In this video, we will be exploring some of the finest attractions in Thailand, namely the Grand Palace and Wat Pho, while enjoying some yummy street food. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's video. Hello guys, good morning from yet another day in Bangkok. Today is our last day in Bangkok and now we are heading towards Siam. So currently I am under the Bangwa BTS and MRT station and we will take a BTS train from here to Siam and explore the place. So let's go. The Bangkok Mass Transit System, commonly known as the BTS SkyTrain, is an elevated rapid transit system in Bangkok, Thailand. It is operated by Bangkok Mass Transit System PCL, a subsidiary of the BTS Group Holdings, under a concession granted by the Bangkok Metropolitan Administration. The system consists of 62 stations along three lines with a combined route length of 70 km. Besides the three BTS lines, Bangkok's rapid transit system includes the underground and elevated mass rapid transit or MRT, the bus rapid transit system or BRT, and the elevated airport rail link ARL, serving several stations before reaching Suvarnabhumi Airport and the SRT red lines of the State Railway of Thailand. In one of my previous videos, I have shown you how the underground MRT system or the MRT trains in Bangkok looks like and how the experience is. So once again, I remind you to check my older videos for experiencing MRT in Bangkok, Thailand. The fares of BTS is not very high. They are pretty reasonable and the journey above the city of Bangkok is really really memorable filled with picturesque landscapes and sceneries. We were heading towards Siam because we were on the lookout for typical Thai street food. But we were also surprised by the amazing city center of Siam. So stay tuned and let's explore Siam together. The Siam Center is one of the biggest malls in Bangkok. It is attached to the BTS station called Siam. And in the Siam Center, you will be spoiled for choices because you will find everything under one single roof. From clothing to eateries to other accessories. The entire mall is situated over a huge area and there are hundreds of shops and hundreds of brands for you to choose from. Besides shopping, you can also spend a lot of time at the Siam Center exploring the various recreational activities and also visiting the multiplex for a quick movie experience. After exploring some time at the Siam Center, we headed out to go to our actual destination, which was 
the street food. It took us some time to locate the place where authentic Thai street food was being sold. But ultimately with the help of some locals, we reached the street food corner of Siam. Needless to say, we were spellbound by the variety and also the high quality of street food that was being sold here. From sweet to savory to desserts to cold to hot food and beverages, you would find the lot over here. We ordered a glass of mango smoothie because let me remind you, fruits, juices and smoothies in Bangkok are a hit. The quality and freshness of fruits in Bangkok is unmatched. So I would also highly recommend you to try fruits, fruit juices or smoothies whenever you are in Bangkok. And definitely this mango smoothie was a 10 on 10. Hello everyone, good afternoon and welcome to another video and today we are exploring the Grand Palace here at Bangkok, yet another very iconic place and a pretty popular one as well, liked by the locals a lot. So without any further ado, let's head towards the Grand Palace. In terms of both form and symbolism, Thai architecture's pinnacle is the Grand Palace center of the Thai nation, monarchy, and main religion of Buddhism. Its traditional function unit, the end of absolute monarchy in 1932, was to act as a seat of government, the king's principal residence, and the center of royal ceremony. Its architecture is not just majestic, but sacred. The great halls topped with five or seven tiered spears are evocations of Mount Meru, the heavenly abode ruled over by the god Indra, to whose status the kings is thereby linked. Pediments, bases and other elements are decorated with emblems of Garuda, vehicle of Narai, the god believed to be reincarnated in the king according to the Khmer derived Hindu concept of the divine monarch or Devaraja. The compound includes a royal wat in accordance with another Khmer influenced concept of the monarch that of the Dharmaraja or moral king who rules according to the righteous percepts of Buddhism. When King Rama I established the Grand Palace in 1782, it simultaneously marked Ratan Kosen's founding and the official start of the Chakri dynasty's continuing reign. He built it in the emulation of the Grand Palace of Ayutthaya, Siam's former capital, destroyed by Burmese raiders just 15 years earlier, aiming to restore the nation's morale and governance. The Grand Palace is the definitive expression of Thai architectural style, combining Thai, Chinese, Western forms and materials. Indeed, it contains almost the only remaining archetypes of the classical Thai royal palace. The world-famous Emerald Buddha is housed in the temple of the Emerald Buddha Wat Phra Kheo on the grounds of the Grand Palace in Bangkok. This statue is a historic, extensively documented and highly revered icon of Buddhism. Despite its name, the Emerald Buddha 
isn't made from emerald nor jadeite but from a form of jasper a grayish green ornamental gem found in india and africa Ayutthaya's palaces were ruined. Sukhothai's were built of wood that has long since crumbled away. And most other royal palaces built during the Ratanakosin's period were done in western style. Renovation and the construction of new buildings have taken place in the Grand Palace since its establishment. Although it is ceased to function as a king's main residence early in the 20th century when King Rama V moved to Dusit Palace, it remains the site of key royal rituals including coronations, cremations and receptions of diplomats. The Grand Palace in Bangkok, therefore, is now a major tourist attraction and you should definitely have it in your wish list. The price of the tickets to enter the Grand Palace is 500 baht per person. Inside the Grand Palace, there is also a beautiful museum that is filled with ornaments, items and artifacts that were used by the ruling dynasties of Thailand. Unfortunately, we could not explore the interiors of this museum because the time for closing the doors of the museum was pretty near and we would by no means be able to explore the entire museum. So. With a heavy heart, we decided that one day we will return once again at the Grand Palace to explore the entirety of the museum and also to film it for you guys. Next up, we are here at Wat Ho, also popularly known as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha. There's a large statue inside of Buddha in the reclining position and it's going to be super awesome. Let's go and check it out. Wat Pho is a Buddhist temple complex in the Phra Nakhon district in Bangkok. It is on the Ratanakosin island, directly south of the Grand Palace. Known also as the Temple of the Reclining Buddha, its official name is Wat Phra Chetuphon Vimon Mangalakhalaram Rajavaraman Sihan.
The temple is first on the list of six temples in Thailand, classed as the highest grade of the first class royal temples. It is associated with King Rama I, who rebuilt the temple complex on an earlier temple site. It became his main temple and is where some of his ashes are enshrined. The temple was later expanded and extensively renovated by Rama III. The temple complex houses the largest collection of Buddha images in Thailand, including a 46 meter long reclining Buddha. The temple is considered the earliest center for public education in Thailand and the marble illustrations and inscriptions placed in the temple for public instructions has been recognized by UNESCO in its memory of the world program. It houses a school of Thai medicine and is also known as the birthplace of traditional Thai massage which is still taught and practiced at the temple. Even when you come out of the temple complex in Wat Pho, you would be mesmerized by the amazing ambience and beauty. For example, we came across this lake, which is so peaceful and meditative that it would immediately make your mind calm and help you focus on your life. One more thing that will help you meditate is the sound of water and the amazing life and the beautiful sceneries that you can experience underwater. So I decided to take you underneath and let's explore what's inside this small lake. Thank you. 
on the other side of the Wat Pho Temple complex, there is another monastery where you would find a beautiful Buddha statue and many Buddhist monks chanting and reciting Buddhist hymns and mantras. We decided to end our day by sitting in this peaceful temple, meditating and contemplating about our life. So that's the end of this video. I hope you liked the tour of Grand Palace and what for. If you enjoyed it, do give it a like and consider sharing with your family and friends. And I will be seeing you very very soon with a brand new video of our tour in Bangkok, Thailand. Until then, stay happy and stay healthy.